This week on Sport Fishing, we're back aboard the Victory. We left out of Long Beach, California earlier this morning, and we're here at Catalina Island. So our skipper Mike's gonna put us on a high spot right now, and we're gonna start off looking for calico bass, yellowtail, you never know what to expect. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. All right. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Oh! Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Legal sheephead, Catalina Island. First fish of the day for the young man. First fish. First fish ever? Nah, not on the ocean. All right, we're gonna measure him now. Make sure he's 12. He's. She looks like she's 12. We'll bag him up. Just got bit. Oh, he's in the rocks. Let's see if he gets out of the rocks. I just got bit. Fish ran. Waited a second. And he went into a structure, so now I put him free spool. Oh, busted off. All right, I gotta put another bait on. First fish ever. That's right, first fish. First fish ever. First fish ever, Catalina Island, aboard the Victory with Dan Hernandez. A little short, but we'll catch a bigger one. Hey, there's a fresh one. Get him. There we go. Who's lying? You got someone's lying on you. Here we go. This fly line to bait got bit real quick. There's my fish. I'm just going to bounce them up. There's a the calico bass. This is what we're trying to catch. You can see that hook right there, mustad hook. Beautiful fish. A little small, we'll let him go. Oh, nice. Oh. 
Metallica. Our first one, Catalina. All the way down. What we're gonna do is explain how to get a bait. I've been on the boat for a very long time, and my story is, if you're right-handed or left-handed, you should get your bait with your, your other hand and hook your bait with your dominant hand. Hey, so come to the nice bait well. You want to search there the best bait you can, and you want to come up underneath it slow and get it with your left hand. And hold them like this and do not squeeze them so you can take your right hand, your dominant hand, and bait the hook. If I'm left-handed, if I'm left-handed, you come up with your left hand, choosing the best bait you can find. And the same principle. You want to get them up so you can hook them to the nose and take your dominant hand if you're left-handed and cross way through the nose and bait the hook. That's my my way to bait a hook. Catalina Island. Victory with Dan. There we go, I got a fish going here. Let's see what I got. I think I got a calico. Yeah, it looks like a calico. Here it comes. Here's a calico. Let's bring them up. Here we go. A lot of calicos here. A few years ago, these would have been legal. But today they gotta be 14 inches. We gotta let this one go. But the fishing's really good. We're doing really good right now on the live bait fly line. Let's take a little break from the action here aboard the Victory at Catalina Island. Go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's fishing trip. This week in the tackle box, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about what we're doing today aboard the Victory. We're out here fishing and we're doing really good on calico bass and we're getting some yellowtail too. Now for the calico bass fishing, if you have trouble casting because you need to cast to get your bait away from the boat, I wouldn't be afraid to go down to something like this. A smaller spinning reel with a 12 or 15 pound test line will work great for the small anchovies and for the really small sardines. But for the bigger sardines and for the yellowtail, something like this works a lot better, something heavier. And what I like is the level wind on it. It's really easy to use. This works out really nice. You don't have to concentrate on moving the line back and forth. The reel does all the work for you. The other thing I like is putting Spectra on here. Use 65 pound Spectra. And with the 65 pound Spectra, I would go 30 pound or 25 pound fluorocarbon. And that would be my main line. And the fluorocarbon, you only need a small piece about half the length of the rod. Now you never know what size baits are gonna have. Like today we have nice big sardines. So you always have a variety of hooks with you. If you get stuck with small pinhead anchovies, you're gonna need like a size four or size six hook. And with those bigger sardines, you're gonna need anywhere from a 2.0 to 3.0 live bait hook. That's why I always talk to you guys about bringing something like this, have a tray with a variety of hooks. That way you have everything from a small hook like a size four or six, all the way up to a 3.0 in case you have to use mackerel for bait. And you notice in my uh, little hook box here, I don't have any shiny bright hooks. Everything I use is either bronze or black nickel. That seems to work out best for me. I like those darker hooks to catch the fish. The other thing I would bring with me too, these calico bass, sometimes we run out of bait, but the boats always have dead squid on there. So have a B-52 bucktail with you, a couple of them, put a strip of squid and you won't have any problems catching calico bass with them. I catch yellowtails on them too. 
Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs> Okay, I got a fly line starting way out there, getting bit. It's taking a little bit of line. So a lot of people make the mistake at this point, once they're getting bit and line's coming out, set the hook right away. That's not what you want to do. What you want to do, put the reel in gear, let the rod load up. And when the rod loads up all the way and it's pointing at the fish, then he's there. So that time he dropped it. So I put it back in free spool. He's back, taking line again. You know, let him swallow. I have a big, big sardine, so I'm letting him get it. Wind down again. There we go. Because I wound down, I was able to get all that slack out. Make sure he was there. Let's see how big this calico is. I don't think it's nearly as big as the last one, but let's see what this guy is. There's really great fishing here at Catalina Island right now. I'm fishing here aboard the Victory with Mike, Captain Mike. And they are just eating fly line, sardines. You don't need any sink or anything. Here comes my fish right here, color. Here we go. There's a legal bass, another legal bass. You can see where that hook is, just right there in the corner of the jaw. Just perfect. This is why you come fishing Catalina, catch fish like this all day long. You got great bait, really nice. Kudas have to be 28 inches long in order to keep them from tip to the nose to tip of the tail. Nice and easy and slow. Hey, there you go, nice big calico bass. Beagle, beagle. That's good, that's good, sir. That's good, sir. Another nice big calico. Yes, sir. What number are you? 25. 25 it is. Thank you. Just got bit again. Might be a big bass. Fit really hard. I got big sardine on there and I got ripped. See what I got. See the gear I'm using? Got 50 pound Spectra with 20 pound mono on top. See what this is? Feels like a nicer fish. Might be a yellow. Uh oh, big calico. Monster calico. There you go. This is a calico bass. Big, beautiful calico bass. This is what you come fishing for. It's nice to be on the victory. I've known Mike for a long, long time when I was a kid growing up. He was a pinhead on the boats and now been a captain for a long time, so it's great to be on the boat with them, catch a fish like this. Look at the size of that calico. 
That's really nice. Nice bass. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action here aboard the Victory and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of the delicious fish we're catching. This one though, we're gonna let it go. Here we go. This week in the galley, we're in West Los Angeles and we're at the Red O restaurant right on Melrose. Standing next to me is Chef Anthony. Hey Chef, thanks for inviting us over. No worries, no worries. And what do you have in store for us today? Uh, today I'm gonna be making our pescado del dia. I'm gonna be using halibut. I'm gonna be grilling it up on our fruit uh, fired uh, grill. Uh, no gas at all at this restaurant. Um, after that, we're gonna layer a uh, layer of white Mexican rice on the plate, hit it with a grilled halibut, and then top it off with our Wajillo chimichurri to finish it off. All right, so we're gonna grab the halibut out. All right, we'll go ahead. I got olive oil already on the plate. I'm gonna hit it more on top. Season definitely all the time. And then from here, right onto the grill. I like to do a presentation side down first, just so we get good color on the top and uh, it just looks nice and sexy on the plate. Now you got good color going on that. Pick up. All right, give it a little turn, get the nice crisscross pattern on the grill. All right, so letting the heat build up on the grill before you even start is one of the key things to grilling. I mean, uh, starting off with a cold grill, it's like starting off with a cold pan. You're gonna end up no matter what with uh, pieces of meat sticking and uh, that's definitely what you wanna avoid especially with working with such a beautiful piece of fish or a beautiful piece of steak, you, you want to have the, the nice, sexy sear on it all the time, and that, that happens when you start with a hot grill. So this is our uh, Mexican white rice that we do here at the restaurant. Hit it with a little bit of mojo de ajo, the white rice itself. So you always want to make sure the fish is about medium consistency. Um, we're placing it on top of the white rice now and then finishing it off with uh, Wajillo chimichurri that we make here at the restaurant. Anthony, this looks delicious. And I love the, the way you did it, nice and simple. Anybody can do this dish at home. Definitely. Except the sauce. I'm sure the <laughs> sauce is like some trade secret. But I've never had this, this Mexican chili before. Oh, that's delicious. So glad you like it. I mean, also topping it off with the grilled lime adds a little more smoky flavor and definitely adds to the components of the dish. Now, and the sauce, I mean, I was expecting it to have a real bite, like a habanero type bite, but it's just a lot no, of flavor. So, so the thing about chilies that a lot of people confuse is that they're always just hot. I mean, once you start working with them and cooking them, the, the sweetness of chilies come out a lot. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's part of the, the, the key uh, of working with chilies is mm -hmm. bringing out that sweet flavor as well. That, that's really wonderful. I've had halibut cooked a lot of different ways, but this sauce really makes it pretty cool. Well, thank you, Chef Anthony. No worries. Thank you. Thank Remember, you. we're at the Red O Restaurant, West LA, right on Melrose. Beautiful dish. Thank you. Well, very let's much. get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs> I caught a, uh, a mackerel, a pretty good sized mackerel. I waited for a while and yeah, this guy started biting. Here we go. Skipper just made a move and we're really close to kelp here. And I threw this sardine right in the middle of the kelp and I got bit. Now starts the challenge part. He's buried in the kelp. So what I gotta do now is put in free spool, let him get a chance to swim away out of the kelp. See if he oh, finds an opening there. Put in free spool here. Don't feel him swimming yet. It's deep in that kelp. There he goes. He was out for a second. Found another piece of kelp. So you just keep doing that over and over. Give it a little bit of line. They don't find an opening. The only one that's more upset about being in the kelp than I am is the fish. He doesn't like his head slammed against that kelp. So sometimes you can give him some free line. They'll find an opening and you can work him out. Or other times they work it. Oh, here he goes. Here we go. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. All right, we got him out of the kelp. 
see how big this guy is. I got him out of some of the kelp. Here he comes. Here he comes. Just want to keep on him. Don't want to get him any free line. Here he comes right here. Here's color. Nice fish, nice big bass. Don't pull on that. There we go. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. Big, beautiful calico bass. That is a monster. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action here aboard the Victory. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. For this week's tip of the week, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we cut all those fish today and how I got those big calico bass. It was all about using a big live bait, a big sardine, and spending time at the bait tank. A lot of people were just grabbing a bait, grabbing small baits, and they weren't catching nice fish. I spent some time at the bait well, picking out those sardines and getting a big, lively sardine, painting it on with a size two, size three, must add live bait hook. That made all the difference. I want to thank the crew of the Victory, Captain Mike Blue, and all the deckhands that did a great job. I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.